Welcome back, everybody. We're here for another interesting segment at LMC. This time, we're out in the yard and we're joined by Malcolm Elliott from Florida Nautical Surveyors. And Malcolm's gonna give us a little primer or give one to Heather on surveying on boats. So Malcolm, I gotta tell you, it's a real nice opportunity to spend some time with you where I'm not worried we're gonna have a deal come apart. So well, tell finally, us. Finally, Paul, I'm gonna teach you about surveying. Well, it's, right? been, it's 30 about years. time. 30 it's been years, a while. Right? It's been a while. Okay. So what we've got is some of the tools of the trade that you've come to realize reveal a lot of the secrets. When you're, when you're surveying a boat, different types of materials, different considerations. Why don't you take an opportunity to show Heather through the different pieces of equipment that you'll use to get to the bottom of the condition of a boat, if you'll excuse the pun, and why we use the different ones on different materials. Okay, no problem. So Heather, basically you've got, uh, the, the majority of the boats are fiberglass. Okay, that's what the bread and butter is. But you also got steel boats, you got aluminum boats, you got wooden boats, and you've got cement boats. Wow. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> cement, straight down, right? Exactly. However, what I've done is I've laid out a, a number of gauges here. Just the tools that uh, surveyors that we use, right? Now, all our gauge, because we do work for the classification societies and also the U.S. Coast Guard, all our gauges that you're seeing here are certified. So that means we got to send them back to the manufacturer, have them calibrated, and it's like, Every year we have them uh, calibrated and we have a certificate for that. Okay. So on the fiberglass boat, you can imagine basically it's like layers of fiberglass, okay? And sometimes you get what you call blisters. Every broker hates blisters. Ah! Right? Every broker hates moisture meters. Because they think as soon as a moisture meter comes out the bag, boom, the, deal's, the, deal. the deal's under uh -oh. it, right? But I've, you know, with experience, you use a moisture meter, but you don't haul the boat out. You can, you can imagine hauling a boat out of the water, the bottom's wet. Mm -hmm. So some surveyors come along, bang, put a moisture meter on. It's wet. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so we, we, when we do the, a moisture meter test in the bottom, we are basically saying it's got to be uh, out the water for three to five days, depending on the vessel itself. But besides the moisture meter, I'll, I'll go into a little bit more about the thermal imaging. We have thermal imaging cameras here. So that gives us a better idea, even when the bottom is wet. Okay. okay. So we, on here, because we do the, the classification, Coast Guard stuff, these are all certified once a year, which is very expensive because these are gonna go back to England. Oh, like wow. The, these ones, right? So these are our main, uh, our main um, gauges. And basically you're putting these on and you'll see the gauge going up and down. See? Okay. Okay, so we're finding moisture. Those are the gauges we're using. This is like a much cheaper one. These, we don't survey, uh, certify these ones, right? Okay. This is like a, I think it's a $1,500 or $1,800 meter. And this is like, I think about $400. A lot of the surveyors use these and they just slide them around and they're not very good. And then the latest one is a, a thermal one, a thermal moisture meter. So we've been using, we're starting to use these. Our guys are getting more used to them, but all of my, all of my team have got one of these, okay? I've got two. And that's fiberglass boats. Now that's when we're checking for moisture, when the boat's been out the water for four or five days. However, you can imagine the, the layers of fiberglass, okay? Okay. When the boat first comes out the water and when it's wet, we have a good look around, right? As soon as it's come out the water, we're looking for blisters. Because like the, the sheen on the bottom of the boat, like any broker listening to this, this is why you see a good surveyor walk around the boat when it first comes out the water. We do that because with the sheen on, we can see blisters, we can see where uh, previous repairs have been on the boat. So we walk around doing that, okay? Then we come to the magic hammer. Phenolic hammer. If you look carefully, this used to be square. <laughs> right? Over the years, this is, this has done a lot of work. We use this on the bottom of the boat. When we're tapping on the bottom of the boat, we want to hear like a, a nice ring. And we got a chuck. Chuck, <laughs> we'll keep tapping. <laughs> no, but we're tapping on the bottom of the boat. And if there's, if there's uh, the layers of fiberglass, if they come apart, you'll hear like a, a dull drum sound, okay? So it's like a, it, it is, it's a really dull sound, right? Okay. When I teach my guys, they're all kind of, I said, don't miss, 
delamination. And they're all nervous until they hear it the first time. And then such striking noise between a nice, uh, clear, like a bell ringing, to a broken bell, right? Okay. So that's the phenolic hammer. That's the famous phenolic hammer. This is just another, this is a hard plastic that we use uh, on the top sides, on a cleaner, cleaner surface system, right? Okay. And anyway, that's the moisture meters we use on the, on the fiberglass, right? Now, when we're checking the, the bottom of a boat, and this, this applies to all, all boats, no matter what the material is, right? We go along, we use this hammer. You see the, the, the gap there? Yes. Okay. This is actually, if you can look on there, it's called a tack hammer. And they used to put a nail in there and the tack, hammer tacks in. Oh, okay. However, what I use it for, when we tap on a, a metal, like a nut, a, pro, a propeller nut, uh, uh, nuts and bolts around the swim platform, when we tap on it, there should be a nice ring, a really, if we tap on a prop nut and this again is the dull sound, it's usually loose. Okay. So that's how we test for the tightness of, uh, of nuts and propellers and swim platforms, anything that's metal underneath the boat. Right? Okay. So these are used on metal. This, this is used well, on metal. Well, this is used on the, the metal parts okay. on the fiberglass board. Okay. The metal parts on a aluminum boat. This is used on any boat. Okay. All right. Metal parts. Yeah. This is you. Sorry. This one is used on a fiberglass boat. Fiberglass we boat. We go underneath. We tap on the. Got the it. Okay. okay. This one here, I use on wooden boats. Okay. Now there's pure wooden boats, or there's cold molded boats with a fiberglass on the outside. It's basically they have a frame. They layer the planking up with a diagonal planking on, double, triple uh, diagonal planking. When we come along here, what I'm wanting to hear is, again, just like the fiberglass, but I'm wanting to hear that the plank is well secured to the, the frame on the inside. Okay. okay. So that's what we use that one. Just a, it's a different sound. I find that these, to my experience, is better sound that I'm hearing on the bottom. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So you use wood on wood? Wood on wood, yeah. Okay. okay. Interesting. You get that, Paul? Wood on wood. I got wood. it. Okay. I got it. <laughs> Now, if you hand me that phenolic uh, hammer, I'll, uh, I'll become a surveyor. <laughs> there you go. You need a shirt. <laughs> now this here, this is a vernier caliper. What we're doing here, this is only up to a certain size. We've got different calipers. But if you've got a shaft coming out and you want to know the, the size, we just, we go like that and we get the size of the shaft. Okay. Okay. So, you know, it's one of the details we're going to get. Okay. And what detail would that be used for? To Just in our report that the we know that it's like a two inch, three inch shaft on a on a you know fifteen hundred, eighteen hundred horsepower. You know, smaller boats will have smaller diameter shafts. Okay. Okay. This one here, these are long feeler gauges. And feeler gauges. When you get as old as me doing surveys, you find yourself. <laughs> okay. No, but these are feeler gauges. So you can imagine the shaft coming through from the boat and you've got a sh uh, strut. Okay. And there's a bearing there, okay? And we use these to measure the, the clearance between the shaft and the, the, the bearing surface. I see. Okay. Now when the bearing, when it comes, uh, when you hold out the water, uh, the water, the shaft and the propeller, the whole weight drops down. So there's only clearance, there should be only clearance at the top. Okay. And what we are measuring for, if you imagine looking at a, a strut, Mm -hmm. The strut is the support for the, the propeller Actually, shaft. Actually, Malcolm, right. Heather's familiar with the strut because we did a segment with AME where she took a dead hammer and she hit the strut on a big I fence that was out of the water. I now, sure I'm here did. to tell you, we had a special camera registering the vibration. That thing did not move. But when we looked at the chalking blocks, she moved that boat on its keel. That girl's got to swim. Well, Heather, obviously, you know. So let me talk to Paul, because he <laughs> won't know, right? Anyway, so what we're doing is we're looking at the, where the strut is, the shaft. So we're looking because of the weight, if it's perfect, it's dropping down. We're getting clearance between like 10 o'clock and two o'clock, okay. just because it's coming down, right? So we measure with the, the feeler gauges, what the clearance is. Okay. This is a, another gauge that we use as well, okay? Okay, and what now, is that used for? Again, it's measuring the, the clearance between a, uh, a cutlass bearing in the shaft. Okay. For a long time, all cutlass bearings were just rubber, right? Nice soft rubber with water waves through. Mm -hmm. Water waves through because any bearing, when the shaft is spinning, there's a film of water 
and it's the the shaft shouldn't be touching the rubber there's a film of water underneath so you have these waterways that go down through the length of the cutlass bearing mm -hmm. nowadays because of the because of the high horsepower what they have is uh it's like an epoxy uh composite bearing it's like a nylon uh, plastic bearing and they don't go by the clearance okay what they do is we go from the top of the waterway to the shaft so we got a slide it's like this like a groove like this we got to slide this in and we got to check the clearance like this okay but just another tool the spike on a wooden boat we can come along and, and spike the bottom right? now what does that mean okay so on a wooden boat if you've got any softness in the plank okay, okay. we can when we tap on the bottom and we can hear maybe the softness right we're, we're listening to the if the if the wood itself is is sound and if it's tight to the frame on the inside and if we're hearing like a dull sound what we can do is come along with a spike and a lot of people don't want to, to hear this you know but we actually push it into the wood okay really yeah okay. and if it's i've seen me just push it right through oh wow on a really bad boat right just so that's obviously not good we don't no. want it to push through right. okay and really when people say oh you can't put that into my boat well, sir, if I'm, if I'm pushing my finger and it's pushing into the wood. It You've just, got bigger problems. <laughs> I've got bigger problems than me for the spike in you know, so, so that's the difference on there. On, um, okay, so on, on any boat as well, we're looking for uh, the bonding system, okay? Now, you, on the bottom of a boat, you have different uh, dissimilar metals, okay? So you maybe have your bow thruster, your through-hole valves, you know, where the fitting is there. You got your shaft, right? So you might have some bronze, some alloy, some bronze through holes. You have a bronze, maybe stainless steel strut, stainless steel shaft. But all stainlesses are not equal, okay? Really? Exactly. So you okay. can have different grades of stainless where I they will grow as well. Okay. And again, on the, the rudders, they can be bronze, they can be stainless steel. Mm -hmm. And some boats have got a stainless steel frame and the rubber. There's rubber molded around them, right? Okay. So the, you've got all these different, uh, different materials on the, on the underwater side. But being in the, the water, it makes it a common. Okay? So when you get electrolysis, uh, like corrosion occurring, okay. it goes to the, the, the softest material. Hmm. That's why you'll see on some of the boats, they have a, a, a zinc on the, on the transom. Okay. So that usually means that the, the bonding system, everything inside the boat is bonded together to make it all common and it goes back to the zinc making the zinc is the softest material it's either a zinc or an aluminum alloy okay so what we do is we got a we got long leads we got a meter and basically what we do and we want to see if there's continuity between this fitting and the zinc the shaft and the zinc the strut and the zinc i see and the rudder and the zinc so we want to make sure it's a, a one big circuit so it's the sacrificial zinc anode a sacrificial being an important word, right? Yes. So the sacrificial zinc, which is maybe anything from $50 to $200, that'll be corroding away as opposed to maybe the $30,000 um, uh, propeller. I see. Okay. So now how do you measure that exactly? You well, use... Well, basically we, what we're doing is if you've got... We got a, um, we're looking for the resistance, right? So we, we put a lead from here to here. I won't pull all this out, but... Sure. Right, so say you're the the bow thruster right? okay <laughs> on a through hole <laughs> we snip this under you okay right? this lead comes back to here gotcha and then this from here to the zinc okay i see so we want to see we want to see there's a circuit right through okay right and there's not while well, we got an issue we want to see a, a complete circuit there okay and it's quite often quite often is like in the <coughs> excuse me you know the through hole valves on the inside of the vessel are lowered down so the wire comes into the, the through hole valve and even if they're connected correctly from the originally if they have some water in the bilge or just getting old they'll crow it off they'll come away on same on rudders they have them on the, the tiller and when that's moving all the time that wire can like fatigue sure. and the wire will, it'll snap off so you just come along you put this onto the rudder you put it to the zinc there's no circuit we got a an issue with the bonding system Okay. Right, so now, um, 
That's basically fiberglass. So we talked about the, the blisters in the bottom. The yes. blisters are basically, I talk about blisters being... Um, Is it what you imagine, like a blister that you would get on your hand? Yeah. Similar to that? Okay. It is. But I say blisters because, uh, you know, some, some people make a huge thing of blisters, okay? Back in, in the 80s, right, there was a, a big, 80s, not, sorry, 90s, there was a big thing because in the Cruising World uh, magazine, they read, the, they wrote this thing over like three or four months. Oh my God. One blister on a sailboat, they did. Uh. Right? It was a big thing. <laughs> I say blisters are like a, a spot in your face. Okay. It's not going to kill you. It doesn't look very good, but it's co cosmetic. Up to the point of, if you have a blister, what I say to some people, if you go along and randomly mark out one square foot around the boat, and then go back and count the blisters in there. So if you've got six random spots, and you've got 10 blisters in each, in, in each uh, square foot, you may have to consider doing a full a strip job on the bottom. Okay. okay. That means peeling off the, the paint, the gel coat, checking the fiberglass for any voids, applying uh, epoxy barrier coat, and then the paint back on. So right. when you get that many, that's when it goes that's, beyond just cosmetic? Yeah. Okay. Now sometimes as well, when you get uh, the blisters, when you pop the blisters, right? You know, if you got a blister, oh, the blister. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so now what you do is you go along, and you, you actually what I do is I, I get the, I get my spike, we see a blister, and you gotta be careful, right? Because if you pop it and it squirts out, it's like, uh, it's, uh, it's like, the best way to describe it is like a, a sour vinegar. Oh. Okay, when you smell it, it's like, oof, you know? So you get this fluid coming out. Right, but it squirts, it goes, uh, trust me, I've had oh, it in my no. eyes. <laughs> so, so anyway, you, you put your hand over, burst it, and then smell it, okay? Okay. Because sometimes, sometimes you get blistering in where the fairing is. So the, the vessel, you know, it's fiberglass boat. We're talking about fiberglass just now. But you've got a fiberglass boat, but where maybe a, a bow thrust has been installed, or the shaft comes out, or the rudder, they put fairing around there, a fairing compound, make it nice and smooth and whatever. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time you get blistering in those areas, as opposed to the hole's good, but blistering around the smaller areas. Mm -hmm. So we gotta, we gotta check to make sure that it's a, a proper gel coat blister and not just a blister in the, in the fair end. Okay. okay. And we use that just to smell it. So I'm going on to um, aluminum boats, aluminum and steel boats, okay? They, um, we have different gauges over here. This one here, again, this is one of the latest and the greatest ones. Uh, I think it's this one. We have a lot of these gauges, right? So what it is, is we're, we're using these to get the thickness of the plating. That's this one here, right? This is, a, this is one of the latest um, audio gauges, okay? This is one of the top brands here. This one here is very good as well. We were using these for a number of years, but um, I find for accuracy, we find that we use these are much better. The Coast Guard like these better as well. So. But let me explain about... Um, now, what do those do again? That measures the thickness. The thickness. Yeah. And how it's, does it do that exactly? It sends a, it sends a signal out through one of the ports. Okay. It sends it out. And then it, it take, it's it, uh, for the receiver, mm -hmm. it takes it, the time for the signal to go out and then to come back again and you get the thickness. Interesting. But, but on here, we're measuring right down to thousands of an inch. Right. Okay, we can do that. Again, though, with the, with the, the audio gauge, we have, I joke around that I, I bring this for most yacht brokers. This is called a couplant, okay? So anybody that's, uh, that's been married and got kids and they've gone with their wives, or you've had it yourself, you're a lady, when you get a sonogram done mm -hmm. for the baby, for the picture, they put a, a couplant. And what that does, and what we use it for as well, is put, a, put the couplant between the surface and the probe, and that, de that takes out any air. Because if we get any air between the probe and the material, it's a false signal. Okay, okay. interesting. The same as when, when we say our, our meters, that's an important thing. Our meters are non-destructive testing. Non-destructive? Non-destructive. Meaning we don't have to take the uh, paint coatings off. Oh, okay. Right? So, 
some guys they have destructive gauges so you'll go into some boat yards and you'll actually see like grind marks all over the hull right? now why would they do that if they have because, this no they don't have this they don't have no. this so that's well, these why are you're expensive the best. these are expensive <laughs> okay <laughs> So these are expensive. So I you, see. See, that's the difference between using a gauge like this and using a gauge like this. I see. Right? Okay. Actually, I, I don't have a cheap one. <laughs> so, <laughs> but no, it's it's a big thing because we can go along, and I tell people though, so long as the the coatings are well adhered to the metal, whether it's being uh, steel or aluminum, and even we're using the coupling because the coupling goes between the probe and the paint to measure the steel. Okay. But if the, the paint is not adhered to the steel, that's got air in there. Mm -hmm. So when we put this on, we're getting a false signal. Will you know if it's a false signal? Yeah, okay. yeah it tells you. This is okay. the beauty of spending money. Right? Wonderful. But again, on, on, um, on steel, if you go into a boat yard, you see, or any yard, you see a sheet of steel, you'll see the steel like, uh, like a big rust, like a sheet of rust, right? And steel, steel boats, You'll get, it's a pretty important, it's actually more important using audio gauges because you'll have the, all the sheet corroding. And you'll have, uh, you can tell the thickness of it as you, as you go around. Hmm. On aluminum boats, the biggest problem with aluminum boats is the spot. You get, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> yeah, you're getting corrosion, but you're getting uh, marks right through the whole thing. That's not the right word I'm looking for. Come on, Paul. <laughs> Pitting, sorry, pitting. Pitting, pitting. Okay. There you go, pitting. So you're getting pitting around the bottom. So you can have a, you can put the probe on, and I've seen this. We can go along here, but look at the size of the probe. If you've got a, yeah, but if you've got an 80 foot boat. You gotta take that thing around the hole. You gotta go along. Oh my goodness. Right, so <laughs> I, I've actually seen putting this on and then looking and getting the scraper and where to like an inch away from this, it's actually a hole goes right through. Wow. So, you know, again, on aluminum, you gotta, you gotta with experience, you know, not, you know, I'm old, I'm experienced, I've, you know, a lot of background in this. As a brokers, you shouldn't just pick up any surveyor, you know, oh, it's an 80 foot board, you surveyor, right? Has he got the experience of aluminum and steel and, sure. you know, being able to look, because I can look at an aluminum boat and it's, it's like a slime appears in the bottom of the boat mm -hmm. when, it's be, when it's corroding. It'd be below the paint, but it's a slime, right? So you know what to look at that area and check it all out, right? So, so, so yeah. now let's say there, there is an 80 foot boat and how do you know which spot to pick? Or like, how do you well, know again, exactly uh, where to go? That's Just a ver that, you know, expertise? That's a, <laughs> a very, very good question, right? <laughs> um, what we do is on steel or aluminum, and again with experience, so, but we, we normally ask that we can survey the boat in water prior the, the day prior to hauling it out, or one or two days before. That way we, we go through the bilges, we look at the, the vessel's drawings, and we get, we get to know where the tanks are, okay? Now I'm not saying anything bad about Broward yachts, right? But I know I'll, I've done a lot of Browards, right? The holding tank, the black water tank, is between the engines, okay? It's an integral tank. That means the bottom of the, the, the hull of the vessel is the bottom of the tank, okay? The sides of the tank is, the, is underneath the engine bed stringers. That forms the engine bed, right? And then the tank top is between the engines. So normally what we ask is that, because I know where the tanks are, I know where the water tanks are, I ask that the, the day before we actually come to a haul out, the tank is flushed, emptied, mm -hmm. flushed, and we stick our head in. Two reasons. We want to see, <clears throat> like there's usually like an area on a tank which is fairly consistent of being right on the, the surface, right? Maybe it's an automatic pump out, the, the fluids come up, the automatic kicks in, and so it's this area here. Holding tanks and freshwater tanks have got coatings on the inside, you know, because there's a lot of, let's say, undesirable fluids that's in that tank. Of course, right? of course. <laughs> and, and if you stuck your head into a freshwater tank, you would never drink fresh water <laughs> on the boat. <laughs> right? It's the scale and it's, it's pretty scary. But on a holding tank, we want to put our eyes onto the coatings. And again, because if it's aluminum, you know, we might say, oh, the holding tank's good. But when we look on the inside that we're finding, very, very poor, 
very poor. Okay. So, so we use that. On the bottom as well, we use this gauge. This is a fancy gauge here. You can imagine, if on an aluminum boat, we have a, a pitting here. We were just using this on the Coast Guard this morning, right? So mm -hmm. we can go along with the audio gauge. We can say that this plate is, say, maybe is a quarter of an inch, okay? Then we use this, if there's a, a pitting in the aluminum, we use this gauge and we can, we, we lower this down into the, ah. into the hole. So then we can measure, you know, from the, uh, the flat surface where the pitting is, right? So it goes down like this. So we measure right. down because at the bottom of that pit, it might just be paper thin. Okay. Okay. Do I you understand see. that one? Yes. Yeah. So this is, uh, it's basically like that, look. This okay. Is, you know, say that was, uh, and then we push this down, we get the depth of the, that's how deep the, the hole is. Okay. Now, at what point is too deep of a hole, would you say? Or is well, it, does it differ? No, it's, um, that's a good question as well. You have good questions, Thank don't you? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you got to teach Paul a little bit here. Right? He's got a lot to learn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a good question. Now, we've, we've worked with the Coast Guard and um, you know, a Coast Guard inspected vessel. And we've actually, I was, I'm not gonna say we've gotten away. We've come to an agreement with the Coast Guard that we've gone to 25% of plate thickness uh, wastage, okay? That means, um, like I'm European, I need to work easier in metric, right? So if you've got a 10 millimeter uh, thickness plate, 25% is two and a half, right? right. Two and a half millimeter. So we measure the, the plate with this, it's 10 millimeter. Then we come along and measure this, and the hole is 25, uh, 2.5 millimeter. Mm -hmm. That's the maximum it can That's be. That's maximum, okay. okay. However, if we go along to say Arena, the Italian society, they'll, again, we've worked with them up to about 17, maybe it's 20%. But you've got a German Lloyd, it's down like eight or 10%. Wow. Right? Now, a lot, what a lot of people don't understand as well is steel and aluminum plate, you might think that you have half inch, but it's like going to Home Depot and buying a two by four. It's mm -hmm. like, when I came to America, it's like, why do they call it two by four? Right. <laughs> it's not nowhere near being two by four. So, so anyway, on, on steel or aluminum plate, it comes, it's nominal size, right? If it was for the, the US Navy, wow, it's gotta be perfect. So it'll be half inch plus or minus, maybe it's five thou. If it's a builder that's buying cheap plate, it might be plus a uh, half an inch, plus or minus 30 or 40 thou. So when we're measuring it, we got to bear in mind, right? So it might be when half an inch is 0.5, when we measure it, it might be down to 0.445, okay? Mm. Okay. So we got to bear in mind, you know, if we have, uh, if the drawings are available and we can find out what the, uh, uh, what the nominal thickness is, it helps us a lot in there. So that's the, uh, that, that's what we do on steel or aluminum. Okay. Now on the, on the boats as well, we have gauges where we can measure the paint thickness. The this paint is, thickness. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, okay. so these gauges, what we do is on like on the top sides, I've seen there's like a dispute when, uh, like a painter, when the paint in the boat, you can see through it. Okay. And people have said, Hey, you, you didn't spray it enough. There's not enough paint on there. And I hate, paint surveys because it's always a dispute and it's like the eye of the beholder you, you look at it one way it's great you look at the other way it's like oh, right? orange peel that's the effect in the paint and then but we got these gauges where we can come along and we actually measure the thickness of the paint this gauge here and this gauge here this goes through the paint and just measures the metal right but these these gauges here I've got one for steel and one for um, I guess you want for metal and one for fiberglass. So we can use these, and the, all we're doing there is measuring the coating. Hmm. We're calling it paint. We're measuring the coating thickness on the, on the vessel. So. And then we have the thermal imaging. Everybody thought when thermal imaging came along, it was going like, wow, this is fantastic. It's good, but it's got its limitations as well, okay? So we got $30,000 camera. Wow. And we got 
I think these are 15 or 18,000. Okay. Wow. Uh, sorry, okay. um, hundreds. That's <laughs> hundreds, sorry. Hundred. Hundreds, yeah. But I find, I find that when we're using these, it gives us a kind of a guide on the bottom. You know, it, it tells us, you know what I say a lot of the time? We got, we got this. Actually, this is, this is the tools of the trade, right? You've got a, a th you got a $30,000 thermal camera. You got a 1500 uh, moisture meter and a $2 hammer. We can and which one tells you the most, Malcolm? Well, after 30 years of going ding, 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 <laughs> this you is got, the one. You got a lot of repetitions with <laughs> right. that one. So this, is, this has made me a lot of money. It has saved a lot of people a lot of money as well, I'll tell you. But well, that's basically the tools that we use. We got to, you know, some people want to know the, the sound inside the boat. So we, have a, we can measure the sound out here. Huh. So, you know, some people want to know that if they're sleeping in the master cabin, how noisy it is. And how noisy it is. So we got to go along and take a, a decimal readings. So wow. in short, you know, what we've, what we've learned here, Heather, is that the primary focus of what Malcolm has talked about has been the underwater component of the survey because it's really one of the most important parts. If the bottom of the boat is tight, then we can go on to the rest of it. If we have a problem with the bottom of the boat, it, it becomes a big problem right out of the box. Sure. Fiberglass, we have one way of determining the condition, if it's delaminated, if it has blisters, uh, if it's in good condition. Metals, we use different instruments for different types of metals. But the long and the short of it is, what we're trying to determine in survey is the condition of the boat. Malcolm, Malcolm's been wanting to put a decibel meter on me for at least 25 years. <laughs> I'm afraid no. to see what the results are. I think our audience it's probably kind, knows it's kind, it's what a decibel like, meter is going to be. It's, it's kind of high pitched. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm good at deep voice. So. No, no, look. What's yours like? I don't know. Let's see. You got the, you got the deepest voice. <laughs> really? Oh, my goodness. The one, the one gauge right. you didn't show us was the BS meter. So if we're going to hook this. <laughs> this is. Okay, to all you brokers, IYBA brokers, anybody, this is what Paul and I met with. He was bent over, <laughs> and I was doing the boroscoping. <laughs> I believe it was on a, a Detroit 692. <laughs> but it was. But the second time you used the gel. Oh yeah, sorry. The second Thank time. Thank you so much. It. No, but this is the the boroscoping. That's uh, we we use that more normally more in, inside the boat, and that's 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 replacing that now with your, your smartphone. So we have a different one, then that reads to your computer. Yeah. Malcolm, this has been fascinating. There's so much to it. You know, I think everybody understands there's a lot to surveying a boat. And one of the things that you uh, that you alluded to that's critically important is choose a surveyor that's familiar with the materials of the boat that you're going to be surveying because right. it's his experience that tells him as much, if not more, than all the fancy equipment and all the high-priced uh, technology we can get our hands on. I, you know, I totally agree. It's, um, you know, we're, we're super busy and I get, I get super busy with just, a lot of con I hear they say consultancy, it sounds a fancy term. People call me and ask me, right? So I guess sure. it is consultancy. But it's it's you know, like nowadays everybody's so busy with work, thank goodness. Um, but there's a lot of people become surveyors. And they go out and buy basically a hammer, a moisture meter, a clipboard. A clipboard, don't forget that, right? And that's about it. And you're a surveyor. And a flashlight, right? Right. And they go out and, you know, I don't know how some of them are surviving, you know, and I just don't. I get, a, I get involved in a lot of legal cases as an expert and it's, uh, it's, it's scary what goes on. So. There's a lot more to learn. There are a lot more components to the boat. We've got a lot of other segments where we've learned other things. And a lot of the things that we've talked about in other segments, Malcolm's brought to light here as well. That's all we have time for in this segment. Thanks very much, folks, for joining us in this one. I think we've got a great handle from Malcolm Elliott at Florida Nautical Surveyors. We're going to break right here, cut away to a commercial, and we'll be back. Yacht Engineering Week 2021 has been made possible by Pantropic Power, the only authorized Caterpillar Power Systems dealer in South Florida. Florida Nautical Surveyors, your complete solution to all of your vessel surveying needs. And Robert Allen Law exclusively dealing with the business of yachting. We would also like to thank Quantum Stabilizers, AME Solutions, 
D'Angelo Exhaust, MPI Marine Professionals Incorporated, Concord Marine Electronics, Lauderdale Marine Center, Marine Data, Isotropic, Dockmate, and Murray Ventilation Products. Thank you for joining us this year. We'll see you in 2022.